Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with another tip of the day for you folks who want to be creative and you have fireplaces in your house. I'll tell you what this fella got and I'll tell you why we're here. Now he, he's got the fireplace, so what he did is he put plywood. He put the studs, he put the plywood. Then he put Wonderboard. Can you plaster over Wonderboard? Sure you can. Um, but what he did is he put two coats of struck the light uh, plaster over that and he come up with this and then what he did is he mixed up some blue gray he wanted to match this color up here and blue gray is uh, I'm looking for my color chart I'll show you that in a minute so we just got here and what I did is I looked at it I felt it and I said how smooth do you want it he said smooth no problemo what we're gonna do is and what the the variations of color first of all is because of the suctions guys if you're gonna put a color coat over you know it's a maintenance free exterior color coat if you're gonna put it over any substrate that substrate has got to be uniform in suction meaning say if I was to do this the first time I could have put water here and if I notice it absorbing a lot here then I just keep putting it keep adding water with a brush you could paint water on you just keep putting it on but the idea is the suction should be similar. I don't want to go the water route because it sometimes varies. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use plaster weld. Plaster weld is by Larson's. It's a bonding agent. It will allow us to put a color coat surface over this color coat surface. Do I need a bonding agent for that? No. But what I'm using this bonding agent isn't to bond the next coat. It's to kill the suction because when I'm done, I want it solid. I want it as solid as you can get a dark color. So what we did first is uh, if, I, if I just started uh, or if I had just went over everything right now without showing you what I'm doing, you wouldn't be able to see all these light and dark patches. It's kind of ghosted through, but we're going to correct that. Now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to do my sides. And the only thing I'm going to show you guys is I'm just going to apply it on the face right here. And I'll show you how to do that and how to steel trowel it and how to get a uniform finish. And by the way, guys, this up here, this is, there was a lot of plywood still showing. So we mixed luminite with a color finish. Can you do that? Sure, if you have luminite. That's an accelerator. And we patched in one inch up here. So I'm, I'm kind of killing time. I've got to let that set in order for me to hit it with the bonding agent like this. I want to hit it so it's set so none of the grit comes off because when you're doing a fine finish or a steel trowel finish, one piece of grit can beat you up, meaning we all this little stuff right here, we, I scraped this all down, scraped the sides down, taped everything, and I got rid of the grit because my trowel will grab a piece of grit and it'll just make a line straight through it. And instead of me being here, 45 minutes, I'll be here two hours. Anyway, I want to show you something outside because a fella asked me, he says, Kirk, you never show how you mix the uh, color finishes we actually have, but since today's all set up on the outside, we'll show you that too. All right, guys, real quick here. Finished coat materials, they come, the sand is already separated, so like this is 2030. That just means it's, it's medium sand. You can get uh, 3030, which is fine, Santa Barbara or marble, and you can get the heavy sand, which is 1620. That's uh, pretty coarse. And here is how you mix, guys. This is a La Habra color chart because uh, I'm fond of La Habra. How many color charts or how many manufacturers of colors do they have? You got La Habra, Western, Carson, BMI, and I can go on for a long time. But here's how you do it, guys. You take a 94 pound sack you put this in two buckets two five gallon buckets it will fill each one you take this two pound box of color two two pound pack of colors and you separate it now you got whatever desired color you want for lighter colors you use a base 100 for darker colors you use a base 200 and since we're going with the blue gray this is a base 200 now everybody knows that Anyway, I'm gonna, Jay's going to mix me up some mud, and I'm going to go ahead and get busy in there and show you guys how we uh, make the color uniform. All right, guys, we are ready to apply this mud. Keep in mind, guys, this is uh, La Habra 
and it does have lie in it. L-Y-E. What is lie? If you kneel in lie, that's what it does once or twice because it is toxic. Let alone inhale it. Don't inhale it. We'll always wear a mask. Did I when I was mixing, when I was hot carrying? No. But should you? Absolutely. All right. Now the, the plaster weld is dried up. And as I did these two sides, as fast as I put it on, it sucked right in. So what I did is I hit this with water now. I put more water over the dried plaster weld. And can you use Quickcrete? Sure, you can use Quickcrete. It's easier found too. All right, now what we're going to do is just put a thin finish on here. A thin finish. And what we want to try to avoid is going too far down. Because we go too far down, we're going to get that... Uh, Clinkers. Clinkers are always at the bottom. So, what we're going to do also, we're going to get, I always take my corners around because I took the side here and I took it around. All right, so now I go right up to it. Come here. And I can come down right here. They have an insert. The insert will cover up to about here. So, now, had I not wet this again with additional water right over the uh, pink plaster weld, right now it would be setting. So I, I'd be putting it on, and as fast as I took a stroke, it would be setting, which means it would be drying. And these folks here, they said, well, Kirk, uh, can you guys make it a little bit darker than the current color that's on the chart? So, uh, Jason, what he did was he put in the bucket, he just added a little bit extra color, and that'll darken it a little bit. Let me get over here. All right, turn around. And remember, uh, when you guys do this stuff, if you do it, at the bottom, if you put that trowel all the way, you'll, you'll pick up a grain of sand. That one grain of sand will just ruin your day because it'll... It'll drag, and if it drags, uh, that's a drag. I may get a, uh, a grain of sand, and you can see what I'm talking about, even though I don't want to get any sand from the bottom. Okay, so now all I'm doing is I'm still troweling it. Still troweling it. What you can't see is I'm still troweling it with the intent of not over troweling it because if I over trowel it, then that'll discolor it too. So you just kind of got to be consistent, guys. Gals, who's ever doing this? A lot, of, a lot of women call and say they've done it and it came out great. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really cool. Okay, so. What we don't want to do is get sidetracked with the corners, like that corner is jagged. Leave it alone. Leave it alone and finish what you started. So, I'm finishing what I started. And my job is to get, get the color uniform as possible because, and I told the fellow here, I said, well, we're working with a 200 base. And we're putting the darkest color. Blue-gray is one of the darkest colors. How many houses have I done in blue-gray? About three. <laughs> and those folks all said they had a hard time selling that house. Nobody wants a blue house, guys, or a blue-gray house. So if you're thinking of color in your house, come up with a different color. Southern moss is pretty. Anything but blue-gray. But on the inside, Especially matching that, it works. Yee, not pretty. Okay. Now again, we're going to take it right into my own color that I did this opposite side. It is such a good thing that I put water on this. Otherwise, 
it would be drying right now, guys. I have a few more uh, trowel fulls, and then it's setting. And once it starts to set, uh, then it can discolor if I, if I keep playing with it. So you don't want to play with it. You just want to get it done, get it on even. Okay, so a little bit more right here. And this is pretty thick. I've gone an eighth of an inch thick. That's about, that's about two coats if I'm doing the Santa Barbara. So an eighth of an inch, is, it's pretty thick. This is just for good measure here. I'm giving myself a little bit of fat. A little bit of fat means I can play with it a little bit longer without worrying about it setting up on me. Okay, a little bit of extra fat right there because it did set. So I can see what I'm looking at. Camera may not show, but I can see what I'm looking at. And if I see something that's already changing to a lighter color, then I'll hit it again. Here's something too, guys. If you're spreading an acrylic finish, all acrylics stay the same color. If you're spreading a cementitious finish like this, they lighten. So like a brick, you wet a brick and it gets very dark. And then when drier conditions occur, that brick turns back into its natural color. All right, now what I'm doing, guys, is I'm wetting this trowel. Now here's where it takes a little bit of practice, guys, because if you wet a trowel and you're going over a dark surface, as fast as you put that on there, it's going to look like Clorox on blue jeans. It'll bleach it. So I got to uh, have this wet and clean, but at the same time, not too wet. And I'm going to start at the bottom. Okay, I'm taking it. One trial full now. That gets all the lines out, guys. And that's done. One trial. If you see a little holiday, just wet it again. And try not to wet it too much because darker colors will bleed. When I say bleed, that means they will ghost and change, and it'll be just like what he hired me to fix. And once you got it where you like it, now you take your little brush, and we brush this, the corners. Here's a tip, guys, if you're ever going to do this. Uh, when you're using a brush on a corner, don't, don't do this, because then that'll, be, that'll leave a white streak. Take the side, just like the side right here, and just barely hit that. That way you're only hitting the corner. You're not, you're not getting both sides of it because it will leave, um, it'll just discolor it. Like again, remember the Clorox on the blue jeans. You don't want that. So if I hit it like this, with this dark color, it'll be noticeable. It'll be a big white streak right there where the rest of it is, uh, it's, it's, it's dark right now, but again, when this lightens up, uh, you'll see that it's closer to that. And again, right here, I've got all these clinkers on the side. So I'm going to take the brush on a slant like this, guys. Just If I go like this, again, I'll have that streak. I don't want the streak. We don't want the discoloration because he's already had that. He'll say, Kirk, I hired you a professional, and you made it just as bad as I did. Get out of here. All right, guys, we are complete with that. The home, homeowner comes and it says, wow, that's, that's way too smooth. I wanted it sandy. And I thought, kid, but if you guys did want it sandy, you put your coat on there, you take a sponge float. And if I were to hit this right now, all the aggregate would come out and it would be just like 80 grit sandpaper. It would look really cool also, but that's not what he wanted. Anyway, guys, we thank you for watching. And as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, folks, as always, thank you for watching another Giordano Stucco video. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe so we can keep making them. And as always, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.